This recording is the last in a series of recordings that cover passive transport mechanisms. And specifically, this one is going to address filtration. We had other recordings that covered both simple and facilitated diffusion, as well as osmosis. So the process of filtration, this is where we have molecules that are forced through porous membranes. So membranes that have like little holes in it. And those small molecules are actually moving because they're um, dissolved in water and getting forced across certain membranes. And filtrate or things like water and various solutes are forced through membranes by um, the hydrostatic pressure of blood, like your blood pressure. So we have a certain hydrostatic pressure, say, in here, and that's going to start to force substances out. We do what we end up having is um, as a result of a various hydrostatic pressures and osmotic pressures, we can have net fluid leaving a blood vessel going into the interstitial fluid, which is fluid between cells, or we could have reabsorption, things that go in here, and that's for a later discussion. But we have osmotic pressures, which are drawing water. Um, you know, it wants to go from its high concentration to low until it reaches equilibrium. The hydrostatic pressures have to do with a pressure, kind of an outwards force, that water getting pushed against a particular membrane. In case if it's here in the capillary, it's moving out here. So we're going to discuss filtration. So here you see a blood vessel and the, the substances are going to move across that capillary wall. And what are things that will affect the rate of filtration? Now I'd mentioned it is passive. There's no energy required for it because technically, like if you think about it, so if you've ever done this is you can, uh, don't have to use a coffee maker to make coffee. You can say set up a little funnel with a little bit like a, some paper towel, put your coffee grinds there and pour hot water here and have this go into some sort of collecting chamber and you'll get coffee because you can actually use gravity for it. Obviously, if you don't want to wait forever for that to happen, you're going to use a coffee maker and we're going to go over why. Okay, why it would speed it up. So with filtration, the rate of transport is influenced by a couple things. So one we're going to write down is the size of the pores. And we have different types of capillaries. We have capillaries that have, you know, not a lot of space in between the cells. We have some that with a little bit bigger space. So by influencing pore size, the greater the pore size, the greater the filtration rate. Another one would be pressure because hydrostatic pressure can influence filtration. It's trying to flu move fluids um, and substances across that membrane through those pores. The more, greater the pressure, the greater the filtration rate. So we're going to show it to you using this, these examples from an experiment where they use this right here stands for molecular weight cutoff membrane where they used um, different uh, if for like the one that says 50 is it won't allow anything greater than 50 um, to get across. If it's 200, it's bigger, it's going to allow bigger things to move across. So that has to relate to pore size. So if you just look here between 50 and 200 is you'll notice that the filtration rate, if we applied the same pressure across it, is notice the difference here. So we quadrupled the molecular weight cutoff from 50 to, to 200. You quadrupled the filtration rate. You went from 2.5 to 10. So increase the pore size, increase the filtration rate. Think about that filter that if you're going to make your coffee. Is if the filter has bigger holes, things are going to move that water and it's going to move, that coffee is going to move into the speaker or your cup a lot quicker. Then let's look at, okay, we're going to keep the same pore size. So we have just used the 200. 
And what we did here is we doubled the pressure. Notice you end up doubling the filtration rate. So if you increase pressure, you will increase the filtration rate. So think about that coffee maker. I don't want to sit and wait all day for my coffee to sit there and drip, drip, drip. I'm in a, I'm in a rush. So that coffee maker is designed to kind of apply a little bit higher pressure to get that hot water through that, that um, filter, coffee filter, and get your coffee faster. So two things that affect filtration rate, pore size, pressure. Let's give you real life examples again. In the glomeruli of the kidneys, the pressure, the hydrostatic pressure that you have in the glomeruli of the kidneys is much greater, much, much greater there than you have in the rest of your body. Because the role of the kidneys, its, it's job is to filter your blood to get rid of waste products. So it's designed to have a much higher pressure there so it has a very high filtration rate. Another thing, let's look at the rolled pore size. Is um, I have, say, um, uh, actually, we'll just leave it there. So well, that's a good enough um, example. So this is your last thing for passive transport mechanisms. So next to look for is active transport.